Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you're new here, we're a homesteading and how-to channel. Today we are talking about the Ram 2500. So I've got a brand new 2022 Ram 2500. It's got the Cummins in it and uh, it's a tradesman model. So really bare, bare, I'm having a hard time speaking. <laughs> really bare bones truck and uh, didn't come with an inverter. So I went ahead, I went on Kijiji, bought all the stuff I needed, got something on Amazon as well. I'll show you here in a minute. And I wired it in myself, uh, 1500 watt um, inverter. I mostly got it because I want to run some power tools and I work on the road quite a bit and I wanted to run a microwave. <laughs> Trying to eat healthy these days, you know what I mean? Um, no more burritos and shawarmas. So yeah, let me show you how I did it. Uh, I did it safely. You want to make sure you, you don't skimp on stuff like this. Uh, you know, high amperage, burn your truck down stuff. So yeah, let's have a look at it. Um, full disclosure, guys, I work on high voltage power lines, you know, you know, 27,000 volts, uh, not 12 volts. Okay. So I'm not a professional in the low voltage industry, but I do know how electricity works. Um, so, you know, this is a standard 1500 watt inverter. I'll throw a link in the description. I, I got this off Kijiji. Um, it came with the wires already. So it came with a positive, a negative, and a, a smaller ground wire. It already came with those. It came with some lugs on the end, um, which I didn't end up using on this side. Um, so they ca it came with uh, two sets of cables. So I don't know how many, maybe 20 feet total. So I ended up having to splice them together. So what I did was I started on this side and I went underneath the truck. We're going to go under there in a minute. And I shoved the wires through. But before I did that, I went ahead and bought myself, I think this is one inch. I'll put a link in the description, but I believe it's one inch, you know, corrugated uh, pipe, just a uh, loom protector, I think they call it. I just shoved the wires in there to help uh, the whole way, help protect the, uh, the wires from damage, okay? So what I did was I wired it up there. Now there's a positive and negative. It's very, very straightforward. And there's a little tiny ground wire, um, which is really important, you know. The ground wire is what grounds this metal case in case there's a short circuit inside of this. You want to ground this to the frame of your vehicle, which ends up bonding to the negative. So if this shorts out, it will, if the metal shorts out, it will go, the, the, the low, the amps, the fault current will go through the ground to your frame, make a loop. You'll end up tripping your breaker because as, as this thing's shorting out, it's drawing power from the battery and we have, we have a circuit breaker installed, and I'll show you that in a minute. So not to get too ahead of ourselves. We got an inverter, it came with my kit, came with my wires, I went on Amazon, I'll show you the link again, bought the loom. I went under the truck here. Let me get a uh, light on. Of course it just rained and fresh asphalt milling, that's awesome. Yeah. All right. So underneath the rams anyways, and I'm sure all trucks are the same, is you've got these holes and all I did is I pulled my, uh, well, you saw just a second ago, the carpet back and I found a hole and I was able to poke it through and it accepts that one inch loom. So I put the wire in the loom the whole way. You know, I ran out of wire and then I had to, I had to uh, splice it. So what I did is I took my wire from the other side. I kind of tucked it in behind the wheel well. And every truck's different. You got to, you know, make sure you're tucking your wires in a spot where obviously your tires aren't going to rub on them or you're not going to short them out. Nothing crazy hot around the wires to, to melt them or anything like that. It's really important you find a good route and every truck's different. So for me, I did tuck it up into just underneath, there's a little vibration pad where the, it goes onto the frame and I was able to uh, pull it up there. When we get in the engine bay, I'll show you. But here's my wire. So there's the ground wire, okay? And here's where the only issue I have with my system and I, I am gonna change it is I should have pressed a lug on the end of the uh, on the end of this little wire. I just didn't have one at the time. And ground it to the frame, okay? I'll zoom in a bit, maybe that'll help you. Right there, so what I did is open up that wire there, wrap the, uh, or open up the nut, and I was able to wrap the wire around it. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so there's your, your, your complete your path, right? So when your something shorts out, it completes the path, it draws more power, and will trip the breaker, like I said. So that's really important. You know, and then what I did is I, uh, I made a junction. 
more or less, where the wires, I pulled the wire from the, the engine bay towards this area. This was the end of the wire that came with the kit. And then I had to join the wires. Now, unfortunately, I'm not gonna untape that, but I'm gonna post a picture of what I use. They're called split bolts. We use them at work all the time. Really high current, uh, easy to use. You can pick them up in any electrical, um, any electrical store would have these uh, connectors. You can use what we call a sleeve too, but these little connectors are really easy. You can get really small ones, so you can you can tuck it in the loom there, and then I just tape the shit out of it and uh, try to keep it watertight, right? Um, and then I just kept going. So and I secured it to the frame using um, zip ties. Let's see if I can show you one. Just like your yeah, that's up there. Just your standard issue zip ties, nothing crazy. And I kept going all the way to the front. Now we'll, we'll jump in the engine bay here and we'll have a look. All right, so we're in the engine bay. This truck's way too big. So I threw my wire down there. And like I said, you gotta just have a look. Now these are kind of big wires. Once you get two of these number, I think they're number one conductor. And then that, um, yeah, two of those inside of that pipe. You know, it's, it's kind of big and a little bit, not heavy, but it's pretty big. So what I did is I ended up throwing like a piece of uh, uh, 14 2 Romex wire down because it's nice and straight and I kind of got it in there and I tied my my um, wires with my loom uh, cable protector and I was able to pull it back and then I zip tied it so you know here's the wire so we got our uh, um, positive and negative it's pretty straightforward there you can check your battery make sure you're uh, hooking them up right you know 99.9% .9 of the time your red wire is your positive okay um, see, my kit came with these little, we call them, uh, lugs. This was pre-pressed from the factory, okay? And I was able to, um, just take the nut off, put that on. I put a little tiny bit of the, uh, contact grease on it, and then I tightened it up there. Okay, now the positive side's a little bit different because to make this safe, you need fusing or some sort of circuit breaker so that if you're unit short circuits it will draw enough power and you want it to trip like you, when you short circuit you want your overcurrent protective device to trip so that you don't burn your truck down and that's where this comes in now i did get this off amazon which kind of scared me but the reviews are really good i'll put a link in the description and um what this is 150 amp so this is number one conductor 150 amp uh breaker and all, all it does is when it when it trips it just pops open like that now i haven't actually tripped it yet i should probably put like a drill and then a microwave on or something like that see if i can get it to trip make sure it is working but i have no reasons to believe it uh, didn't so it came out you know my negative went right to the battery no issues there but i had to cut this in right so then I, my positive was coming around i cut the wire i had to go and buy um well my, my kit came with a couple of those little lugs but you may have to go to that electrical store i mentioned and grab a couple of little lugs press one on and these these are really straightforward I know I got tape on this but you'll see it, it comes in like this then it goes through and then it comes out okay and where it comes out then you got to get another lug and press it onto the wire or you can get these battery uh, connectors so you, you put it on your terminal and it accepts more um, wires I just use what I had at work so I have this super heavy duty um, number one lug and like it's it's hardcore it's a little overkill for this but um, we know she ain't going nowhere, that's for sure. And yeah, so that's what I did there. And I pressed that on, a little bit of lube on where it makes contact. Now I secured my wires with zip ties, make sure nothing's gonna go. Like the engine bay gets extremely hot, so make sure it's not touching anything that gets, you know, really, really warm, because um, you don't want this to, to um, you know, get a nick in it and then start, start a fire, that's no good. Make sure you're good there. So yeah, I've had this now since I probably installed it second, first week, first or second week about the truck. So it's been going now for a couple of months. It's uh, really, really good. Okay, so the last uh, little bit here. Um, you know, make sure you have a fuse in there and make sure that um, you're fusing your, your uh, equipment properly. You know, that's 150 amp fuse. It's 12 volts, so you know, low voltage, high current. Um, 1500 watts in your house typically gets a um, like a 15 amp breaker like a household breaker right but that's because you got 120 volts so when you drop your voltage you, you increase your amperage to get the same uh, work done 
And yeah, so that's all I got for today's little video. I'll put a link in the description for all the parts I have. If you want to support the channel, um, you can click those links and we get a little kickback and it, uh, it does help. So uh, appreciate that. If you have any questions, uh, leave them in the uh, bottom there. And yeah, it's real. it looks intimidating and it's scary because it's, you know, inverters and all that. But as long as you um, pay attention, tighten everything up, secure it and fuse it, you should be just good. Alrighty. Um, thanks guys, consider subscribing and we'll see you in the next one. Take care.